my pronouns are he, his and him. I'm a local Chester-based artist. February is LGBTQ plus history month in the UK. This year, Chester Pride are running a series of online articles, talks and workshops to celebrate the observance. They asked me to give one of the talks and this, as this year's theme is mind, body and spirit, I thought I would do a creative identity and wellbeing activity. I've decided to talk about me, my identity, mental well-being, writing, sketching and haiku poetry. As a conclusion to this talk, I have designed an activity to help you create your own illustrated haikus based on how you feel. The reasons for this are that I have Asperger's syndrome uh, and have been isolated with my family for a year and I found lockdown truly difficult and needed a creative outlet that haikus provided. It's okay to have a bit of an off or a rubbish day, but at the moment rubbish day seems far more frequent. A big part of my identity is being on the autistic spectrum. It affects the way people treat me and the ways in which I think, act and interact with people. Uh, and all the routines and coping strategies I've developed are seen by others as personality quirks. Over the last year, though through the pandemic, I, like everyone else, have had to change my routines drastically. This has been really hard and made me feel very down. To cope, I started writing and sketching a lot more. My sketches are mostly simple doodles and my writing is often uh, just lists, but it has really helped at times and been fun to do. Uh, here's some examples of, of the sort of things I was talking about. I've got these little books and I've been doing kind of like doodly sketches and notes in them like that. And so this one's got like loads of kind of cartoony robots and aliens and stuff in it because I quite like there's like a flying saucer uh, and they are literally just kind of and they, there are some characters from some films uh, and then there's some bits and bobs that I've just kind of drawn um, and yeah as you can see this is kind of a spacey thing there's a dinosaur on a space rocket which is always a good thing to think about when you're feeling fed up and there's a dinosaur with a um, spaceman's lid on there okay so and there's other bits and bobs as well uh, I think it has, um, so they're the sketches that I've done and you can, you can try sketching, it's, it's a really nice relaxing activity um, and as I say writing is good as well, I haven't uh, got any of my lists that I've written here as examples because they're a bit too messy and stuff um, but sometimes it's a good way of getting your thoughts down and your ideas down by just sort of writing, writing a, a list. Okay um, and once you've sort of started doing it, the next thing to do is to um, take it a bit further. Uh, and the reason I decided to take it a bit further was I began combining my doodles and lists together. So, and I realized they formed coherent thoughts reminiscent of illustrated poetry, particularly haikus, which inspired me to create haikus of my own. Now, um, creating an illustrated haiku is very challenging, yet incredibly therapeutic. And I recommend sort of giving it a go. Uh, you can write and draw about anything you like, but to fit in with the theme of uh, this year's LGBTQ plus history month, try writing about how you feel, who you are or someone you know, and illustrate your IQ, haiku with a suitable sketch or appropriate image. If you don't uh, want to write about yourself or anyone you know, you could choose to do uh, so about someone uh, very famous like Alan Turing and if you need further inspiration Chester Pride has been posting all month a short biography of different LGBTQ plus icons every day uh, on, on their social media. Right so what is haiku? A haiku is an ancient form of Japanese poetry that has become popular with English speakers. A haiku usually contains a total of 17 syllables shared between three lines that are arranged in a pattern of 575. Most haikus are short using the three line format, uh, but others can have multiple verses, each containing three lines and 17 syllables. Okay. When preparing uh, this talk, I found many examples of appropriate haikus online, and here are a few of my favorites. Uh, these first two, which I'm gonna hold up in a second, um, are from the wildworld.com, uh, sorry, wildlovelyworld.com website, uh, and the author, Lauren, wrote them to express concerns about, them, her, uh, about their mental health um, and make themselves feel better, encourage others to write haikus. And so I've got, uh, got it here and it goes, rather stay at home, an introvert's paradise, 
lonely anyway. So you can see uh, there's three lines there and you've got five syllables in the first line and you've got seven in the second and five again in the third. Now this is another one from uh, the wildloveflyworld.com uh, uh, website, again by Lauren. And uh, this one is really quite good. It's uh, get it out of your mind. I am trying my best to. One way is haiku. Uh, and so there you go. And then another really nice one that I, I, I like is, and I'm probably going to pronounce this name wrong, but it's uh, by uh, one of the most famous Japanese poets, uh, Kobayashi Issa. And this is my uh, favourite one by them. Um, Everything I touch with tenderness, alas, picks like a bramble. And so, again, three lines. And it's very, very cool. Um, so there's that one. And then, um, some haikus can be like very witty, sweet and funny. And uh, there's, uh, like this one, from uh, Joel uh, Durfner. Okay. So, and it is, I don't understand. You love it when I do that. Wait, no, that's Stephen. Uh, this haiku is from the book Gay Haiku by Joel Durfner. The book contains 100 uh, joyous haiku poems about the perils of gay dating. Okay, And another very, uh, very good book worth looking at is the Lesbian Sex Haiku Book with Cats by Anna Pulley. It uses different three-lined haikus arranged as paragraphs to describe uh, lesbian sex acts and illustrates these acts with very amusing cat cartoons. Okay, so for simplicity, if you want to write your own haiku poetry, use uh, the following definition and rules. Okay, so I'm going to hold this one up again. So you've got three lines, okay, and over these three lines there are 17 syllables. The first line contains five syllables, the second line seven, and the third five. Okay, uh, the third line can also be used as a punchline if you want, uh, as it is uh, in the Joel Durfner poem. Um, and it could be a surprise at odds with the first two lines, okay? Now, I've written a haiku about arthritis. Arthritis is something I suffer from, and it's really, really bad. This last month, February, has been the worst I've ever felt with it, and I've been very, very poorly. Now, I haven't been able to um, do much of my work, which is why um, today, which is the last day of February, is while I'm doing my video now, when I was originally going to do it, at the beginning of the month, but I've just been uh, stuck in bed with uh, arthritic pains and stuff like that. So, uh, here's my example of a haiku, and I've illustrated it, okay? Um, it's, I'm going to have to read it, and it says, wrist, knee, hip, shoulder, painful, connected, aching, bugger, arthritis, okay? And uh, I've done a little, ske a little sketch of how I felt. I felt about a thousand years old, and... Uh, days where I couldn't get out of bed and stuff and then what was worse is I'd have a day where I feel a lot lot better and I'd do something like go to the shops uh, to get my shopping because I really was desperate for it and then by the time I got back uh, I, I could barely walk and well, again I had to lay down and stuff like that so um, but yeah arthritis have been very difficult. Okay so uh, my arthritis hiking is not particularly uh, good but it does illustrate um, my point of writing about your concerns and it uses the format of 17 syllables uh, over three lines in the pattern of five some five right however if you um, want to do your own there's different ways you can go about it so have a go at writing your own and use it to explore uh, the feelings about yourself or someone else uh, try to capture the moment in, in time uh, or express your identity and once you've written your haiku work out how you want to display it. Now, the way you display it could be as simple as those examples I just showed you, which is you can have, uh, the, the paper I use is actually uh, pre-printed stationery. It comes with all these kind of watercolor style drawings on it, and you can get uh, packs of it. It's, it's sold mainly for calligraphy, okay? And so there's like different types. This one's quite a nice one, okay? Uh, and and that's the simplest way of doing it. You can you could just get some nice stationery and do it on that. Here's one that uh, my daughter uh, did. Um, 
and uh, she's 13 and uh, but she wrote this a while ago when we first started to get into them um, and it's uh, called Ray it goes drip drop patter splot splashing on the windowsill zap flash bang wallop um, I'm guessing the last line is when the lightning strikes and stuff but that's written on the uh, uh, coloured sort of water coloured paper uh, calligraphy paper right uh, another idea you could do obviously would be to do your haiku and then do a drawing next to it and then or you could try something like this now this is actually a photograph of me when I was 17 and a haiku on there was uh, one written by a friend who's known me for well since I was about nine and it, it's her memories of how I was at the time and that's what she's written there um, and we uh, and then we've I've put this in a, in a in a recent book we've done as well and then this one here is from another recent book and it's about a particular place um, it's uh, about a dam in Wales uh, well a reservoir in Wales which is very beautiful and um, this particular day is um, it was uh, sort of misty and everything like that so that's the other way you can do it so you can superimpose your haiku over an image uh, either a photograph or an image that you print off or you can put it on calligraphy paper or you can illustrate it okay Best thing to do with it though is kind of come up with your high cues, come up with your drawings and just relax and have fun doing it. That's what it's there for, it's to kind of sort of get your kind of um, problems down on paper and sort of run and, and kind of almost try and have fun with them. Uh, and uh, and that's that's all, I, all, all I'd like to say today. If you've enjoyed this talk and are looking for other creative activities and interesting facts, um, you can get the Chester Prize new book that's coming out soon um, and you can also check out their online articles because all this month uh, gone they've had on social media uh, they've had oh I've lost my way sorry <laughs> on social media they've been talking about uh, a different LGBTQ icon every month um, they've been doing that kind of thing there's also been some talks by some of the members of the committee and stuff like that and uh, they've been um, they've all been good so have a look check out what they've got and that's all thank you and goodbye